Hello guys, Ancient Game Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. As for this video, I'm showing you how to install RD... No, <laughs> how to install <laughs> RDNA 4. <laughs> or how to make FSR 4 work with the RDNA 3 GPUs, aka RX 7000 series. Because yes, you can make FSR 4 work with the RX 7000 series if you're running on Linux. And if you don't really think that Linux can bring you the performance levels that you need, well, in most scenarios it really can, especially if you're using an AMD GPU. You. and you can watch these videos on my comment section about Windows, Linux and so on because I show you some results that I'm pretty sure that you weren't expecting. Well, first of all, I have a link for this. So this link will of course be in the, in the um, pinned comment or, or maybe the, the description, yes, the description for sure. And this basically contains all the steps that you need to enable FSR 4 working properly on Linux for both RDNA 4 and RDNA 3. And the reason why it works with RDNA 3 is that the Mesa experimental drivers, basically the, the, the drivers, the most recent drivers, kind of the beta drivers for Linux on the MD cards, kind of emulate FP8 instructions and that's the reason why I believe it's through FP16, I believe. And that's the reason why FSR4 can work with RDNA3 as well. By the way, uh, the first step is you must install Mesa Git, which is basically basically the latest Mesa. I'm kind of stuttering a lot because I'm really tired. So going here to the system settings, I believe that we have, yes, exactly, Nobara Driver Manager. You open the Nobara Driver Manager. As you open it, you can see the VGA compatible controllers. You open it, the latest stable version of Mesa Vulkan. And then we have the latest Git version of Mesa Vulkan. And again, experimental. Yes, and this is the one that you have to install. In case you have this one, you just open here and install this one. And just by the way, as usual, if you want to help the channel, lay an eye on today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall. Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. This is the one that you have to install. In case you have this one, you just open here and install this one. And after you do this, you need this file, the AMD X CFF X64. And this is basically the file that will inject FSR4. And you need this file and you can do all this process here that you can see basically downloading the drivers and then um, kind of unzipping the, the drivers. If you want, you just have my links in the description and my links in the description will have both FSR4 0.0 and FSR 4.0.1. I believe that FSR 4.0.1 is a bit more expensive in terms of computational power. It does solve some issues in terms of some shimmering when movement, in movement, not when movement, uh, when moving or in movement. And, and yeah, it really solves in games like Spider-Man 2, for example, when you, you're kind of dashing through the city, like doing the, those web slings, those really fast web slings. With a 4.0.0, you kind of have shimmering for a split second when looking at um, when looking at the buildings with a 4.0.1 that doesn't exist anymore. So yeah, just go to the link in the description and you'll have the option to have the file of the 4.0.0 or the file of the 4.0.1. And the third step is locate Steam data folders. And again, this might seem really, really easy for people that are into Linux. But for me that I was a noob and I'm still a noob in terms of Linux, of course. But for me, it was really, really hard to understand. So kind of locating the Steam folder of the comp data and then going to the system 32, system 32 of each game. But I mean, system 32 is for Windows and of each game. So it means that each game has a Windows or a system 32 folder. Yes, in Linux it does. So if you're running a Steam game, you just need to go to your home folder. Then you go to Steam and by the way, you need to go and enable um, the option to show hidden files and then the Steam folder will appear. You open the Steam folder, you go to Steam again, then you go to Steam apps, then compat data, compat data, sorry, you open it and then you have these files. Each one of these folders are, um, are correspondent to a game that you have. Let's say I will try to do Doom the Dark Ages from the beginning for you guys to see how it works because again it's really interesting uh, Doom the Dark Ages doesn't really work with Vulcan with FSR4 because FSR4 isn't really working with Vulcan yet at least officially but with Linux it works because every single game is running Vulcan. So yeah 
All we have to do is go to Steam, then you go to the game you want, in this case Doom the Dark Ages, go to Properties, and here in the Properties I believe it's the Updates, maybe? Yeah, the Updates, we have the App ID, in this case 3017860. So 3017860. You open this folder because you now know it's the Doom. It's from the Doom. The, the Dark Ages. <laughs> I'm really stuttering. Then you go to PFX. On the PFX you have the Drive C. You open it. Then you go to Windows and then you have the system 32 folder and yes every single game like this has the system 32 folder and then you go to the home again. You copy either the 4.0.0 or the 4.0.1, just go, copy, then paste, one file, and this is the first step. After this is done, you just need to do one more thing. You go here to the Steam Launch options and you need to kind of, well, copy one of these. If you have an RDNA 4 card, an RX 9000 series, you just copy the WMMA FP8 hack in order to make the FP8 uh, instructions work with Vulkan and so on, in order to make the performance not drop as much. And if you have an RX 7000 series RDNA 3, you need to copy this one. So we just copy the command. Then again, Doom the Dark Ages properties, go to the launch options, copy it, and you're good to go. And by the way, depending on your Linux distribution, uh, the part of the game performance might not work and might actually give you some issues. But well, let's try it and see if the game runs, because in the past it didn't actually run because of the game performance mode. Let's see what we have here. So as you can see, after loading the shaders, the, the game just won't run. We need to go to properties, kind of eliminate this game performance part, just leave everything else, with the WMMA RDNA 3, FSR 4 upgrade and so on, and now press play again. It should be running Vulkan natively, yes, seems so. And we're now inside the game, let's see what we're running actually, so... Let me just see, on the settings we have XESS, which seems kind of normal, I guess. So, we're running native, native settings we get 48 FPS. Now, we go to XESS, oh, low, oh, the performance metrics. Now we go to XESS, and we do something like ultra quality, so yeah, okay, ultra quality, and with XESS ultra quality, we have 70 FPS. Now, if with FSR, we have lower than 70 FPS with the 7900 XT, it means that, of course, FSR 4 is working, so let's see. Instead of XSS, we're gonna go FSR. Instead of native AA, quality mode. And remember, FSR 3.1 always gives you better performance than XSS on the MD cards, like always. So again, if we have lower performance with FSR 3.1, it means that FSR 4 is working. And well, it seems it isn't really working here, so let's start with Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2 and do the same process. So, properties. We can go and see the... Um, the app ID 218 3900 218 39900 PFX Drive C Windows System 32 and then we go we copy the 4.0.1 copy it paste it and we're good to go we go to Warhammer launch options done then we just go play and we're good to go and well, here we are, and let me see the settings that we're using, actually. Borderless, nope. Let's go full screen, and we're using FSR quality, and we have the option to use native, and remember, this is the 7900 XT, and we're, when running native, we're running at 25 FPS, which is not even close to what we get. And as soon as we go to TAA, and we run in quality mode, as you can see, we go up to 50 FPS, and this just shows you that we are really running FSR 4, because going from TAA to FSR 4 native on a car that isn't really, uh, well, ready to work with FSR 4, puts us uh, from TAA 50 FPS to 25 FPS with FSR 4. It works again, but yeah, the performance decrease is just crazy. Again, we have 50 FPS, and we can go to let's say TAA performance mode, and when we do, we go TAA performance mode and we have around 130 FPS. But of course, if you look at the image, it looks really, really bad, really blurred out, way worse than FSR 3.1, FSR 3.1 that we can use here, of course. 
And as soon as we go to FSR 4 performance, let's see the, the FPS that we have here. Yeah, so 36. But then I remember that we were using the FSR 4.0.1 and it seems that in some scenarios it, it is way heavier than 4.0.0, especially for RDNA 3, I don't really know why. So let's try the file from 4 for 4.0.0 instead of 4.0.1, overwrite, and let's run Space Marine again. And I was right, with FSR 4.0.0, the first version of FSR 4, RDNA 3 cards can run decently well. We get 93 FPS with TAA quality, but of course, if you look at the, the image quality, it is quite bad. And if we go to the performance mode, it is even worse. What we can do here is that, so TAA native, which is the one that we should be playing. It is 50, 450 something FPS in this case, 50 FPS, yeah. But as soon as you go and you just enable FSR4 quality mode, you still have 50 something FPS. So you have around um, you have around the same FPS as the native as the native TAA. And if you look, for example, at the letters and so on, the quality is even better. Not in all case scenarios, but according or comparing to TAA, it's still even better. And while the 4.0.1 version was having really, really bad results, like we're talking, we're talking about like, like 30 FPS, 32, the 4.0.0 brings around 52, which is really, really great. As soon as we go to the performance mode or balanced, in balanced, we can get around 59. Oh, it kind of hovers. I would say that we, we would get around 60 FPS while not recording, which is great. And if you go to the performance mode, something that works that works fine now, if you go to the performance mode, you now have around 60 FPS. I would say without recording around 65. And I must tell you that if we compare to TAA, I guess that in terms of some fine details, FSR performance still has better fine details than, than TAA native. That's how much better FSR4 is, and by the way, by the way, I I really have a big monitor, so I can I can see the difference in details. And the FSR4 performance still has better fine details uh, than TAA in some cases, especially for example on these letters that you see here on the armor. Yeah, just looks great. But yeah, even emulating FSR4. On RDNA 3, it can still bring you pretty nice image quality. And of course, I can notice that we are upscaling from 1080p to 4K, but still the quality difference is, is, just, is just very good. And again, if we're, trying, if we're trying or running, if we run TAA at native, so we're running through 4K, if I look at the fine details, for example, at the trees and so on, things look better for sure. But for example, if I look at the armor, uh, I can see that it doesn't look as good in terms of again lining and so on because TAA has that, that well-known TAA blur when moving and so on but besides that of course 52, 50 something if we go with TAA if we go to anything below native it just doesn't look good for example quality mode we start having shimmering and we have that blurred out image but, uh, but of course we're having 100 FPS. And if we're going to FSR 4 performance mode, we are way below the 90 FPS, but at the same time the performance mode does have way better image quality than TA in quality mode. But yeah, the GPU just isn't ready to work with FSR 4, so yeah, performance won't be great. And well guys, that's all for this video, hope you enjoyed the video, hope you understood how to make it, if you have any doubts, leave them in the comment section, and as you can see, after you get past all these common sense doubts that we have, people going from Windows to Linux, all of us have, things are pretty easy, you just need to go to the games folder and so on, to the system 32 of the, uh, of the game, of each game, just copy, the AMD injection file and then you just go copy that command line to the Steam launch options or to any other launcher that you are using for Cyberpunk for example with the Heroic launcher and you're good to go. It's as simple as it can be. So if you want to test FSR4 on your RDNA 3 card you can just try for example Nobara 42 or Cache OS and so on and just do it. Thank you very much for watching again, leave your comment in the comment section and see you in the next video.